Do you believe that your love life is difficult? Well, you're not the only one, because our God struggled to discover and accept a love partner, and a tale that confirms this is that of Pan and Syrinx. So, in today's video, we'll dive into their story and you be the judge. Pan was the goat god, the forest's patron deity. Although there are conflicting theories regarding his origins, many scholars believe that he was the child of Hermes and Penelope. According to legend, Penelope had 108 lovers while her husband Odysseus spent 10 years making his way home from the Trojan War. Hermes was one of these suitors, which led to the conception of Pan. When he was born, his mother screamed so loudly that other people who had come to witness what had happened could hear it. And when she saw the small horns, goat ears, and goat hooves of the baby, she also panicked and fled from him. Hermes, though, laughed and adored his young kid. After wrapping him in a blanket of rabbit hair, he brought him to Mount Olympus to introduce him to the gods and goddesses. They were all in awe of how strange he appeared, but they also adored him and his tiny goat ears just as much as Hermes did. He was therefore given the name Pan, since all the gods loved him. Hermes then returned little Pan to assist in caring for herds of animals on Earth. Despite not being a principal Olympian deity, Pan had a significant role in Greek mythology due to his connection to the natural world and fertility. Pan lived a happier life than all the other gods put together. He was adored by his fellow shepherds and citizens in the fauns, satyrs, birds, and animals who lived in his kingdom. He was in charge of tending to flocks and herds, and had the entire world's woods and waters to live in. He was the ruler of the great outdoors. Pan didn't feel pressured because he spent his days engaging in communal dance, singing, and laughter. The fauns and satyrs resembled him in that they all had small horns and sharp furry ears above their eyebrows. They appeared to be no strangers to anything wild. They ate wild grapes and the nuts that every squirrel was willing to share with them while sleeping in the sun and relaxing in the shade. However, this Greek god had a dark side as well. Ironically, the playful Pan is where the word panic comes from. The travelers were often scared when they met Pan because this deity enjoyed strolling through the gloomy forest. Even armies could be scared off by his booming, commanding voice. As soon as they heard him yelling, the warriors left the battlefield. The Athenians thought the victory over the Persians was mainly due to Pan's terrifying voice. Later, they constructed plazas, erected sculptures, and planned big celebrations in his honor. Pan was only upset about one thing. Despite having so much love, he was unable to gain the love of any nymph, and thus he was constantly pursuing them. It is also interesting that Pan and sex are essentially inseparable. He is a passionate god, and the patron of sex performs solely to gratify one's sexual desires. His stories are full of conquests and love affairs, yet lack committed relationships, in keeping with his contradictory nature. Although Pan is frequently associated with instant gratification and living in the moment, the ancient Greeks also saw him as a symbol of the grief, regret, and loneliness of such recklessness. He is even frequently seen with an erect, uh, yeah, that, unlike many other representations of the male gods. This is noteworthy because huge dongs were seen as symbols of traits like folly, desire, and horror in the ancient world, whereas small shrimps were more highly regarded culturally. As a result, while images of the gods in ancient Greece being nude were prevalent, those with pulsating organs were not. Pan was a sexual deity, though not in the ways that were acceptable to society, as evidenced by the fact that he was frequently shown to have an erection. One day, he came across the stunning wood nymph Syrinx while loitering in Arcadia. Syrinx enjoyed bow and arrow hunting. She was racing to hunt with Diana and was just as quick and attractive as any bright bird one would like to catch. She caught the attention of Pan, who later fell in love with her. Pan hastened to tell her what he had just thought, but when Syrinx turned, she saw the god's two tiny horns on his head, together with the shaggy hair and sparkling eyes, and she sprinted away down the path in fright. Pan followed, pleading with her to pay attention. Syrinx, who was growing increasingly terrified at the sound of his hooves, ignored him and continued to run as quickly as possible until she reached the bank of a river. Pan pursued her relentlessly, till the nymph finally jumped into the river. She cried out to her sisters there for help, and when they saw her suffering, they were moved and transformed her to a hollow river seed. Syrinx begged Zeus to save her desperately, and Zeus responded by changing Syrinx into a reed. Syrinx vanished like a mist as the goat god approached her and opened his arms to embrace her, and he suddenly found himself holding a group of tall reeds. 
poor Pan. Every time the air disturbed the reeds, it made a delightful little sound, an unexpected melody. Pan smashed the reeds to pieces in a fit of wrath. He was, however, soon overcome by regret. He cried and kissed the broken reeds. He learned that his breath could make sounds from the reeds as he kissed them. Pan heard it and was somewhat comforted. Is it your voice, Syrinx? he said. Shall we sing together? As a result, he created a musical instrument from the reeds bearing the name of the missing nymph. He blew across the hollow pipes, and they made music. Even though he termed the instrument Syrinx, it will always be known as Pan Pipes or Pan Flutes. Pan carried his beloved Syrinx wherever he went, charming gods and mortals with his melodic notes. The instrument remained the god's constant companion from that point on and became one of his identifying characteristics. This was but one major story of Pan, who has been represented in a variety of ways. Around 500 BC, he was first depicted as a goat standing upright on his hind legs on Greek pottery. In later works of art, he grows a human upper torso and head while keeping his goat horns, and he frequently hangs out with mynads and satyrs. Pan's nature, which has always been paradoxical, an uncivilized god in a civilized world, instead lends itself to this evolution. He has always been the shepherd, the protector between the civilized world and the wild. However, he has also had certain feral traits similar to how a goat could never be domesticated. He was one of the most well-liked gods in ancient Greece, although his worship never had the widespread influence that Dionysus, Athena, and Apollo had. He was also famous for his unfettered sexuality, yet he was rarely successful in courting. In all, the story of the Greek god Pan in the nymph Syrinx is one of unrequited love and the creation of a musical instrument. What are your thoughts about this love story? Let us know in the comment box below. Also, if you enjoyed watching this one, make sure to smash the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future uploads. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay mythically mad.